Welcome back to Two Coaches, One Conversation. Once again, I am Coach Sheldon. And I am Coach Will. And we're back to give you some facts, uh, give you our opinion on things that matter in the travel basketball world. Not necessarily mean that it's, it's a true guide to everyone's thoughts, but we're going to give you our opinion, try to help you out, and hopefully change some lives and change some attitudes about different things that are going on in our sport. So today, we did have a different situation planned today, but we're not going to go into detail because things do happen. So as men, we, we figure out the situation and we roll along with it, and then if it comes back around, we're going to figure it out. Uh, today, though, we, we want to cover about marketing your athlete for your program or if you're a parent getting your information out there to help your kid out to be exposed to coaches and universities so uh we want to start with our own little list and but first before we do that we want to talk about the things that is going on in the news today now this is not a news channel we are not political we don't get into all that but it's a lot of things that's affecting a lot of travel ball clubs sports is shut down all together in general uh, so we just want to kind of shed light on some of our thoughts behind the matter uh, a lot of people on social media and a lot of groups that we're in are talking about you know they're, they're split they're talking about you know things should be shut down we should be thinking about safety we should be thinking about uh, everything that's going on that can affect everyone around them. And we are very sensitive to that. But at the same token, uh, our program hasn't stopped. Matter of fact, we're going we gonna to sweat it out this weekend coming up. Uh, we gave the kids a, a week off for spring break to go and do their thing, and we're we going to get back at it. Uh, not to say that we don't respect what's going on out there, but if it isn't affecting our area, if it isn't affecting our kids or us in general, and we feel that it's safe, we are monitoring it, we're gonna roll with the situation. What you feel, Coach? We, coronavirus, they say have a, a strong immune system, we gonna run them right into a strong <laughs> immune system. Hey, we don't, we, we don't cure the asthma before, so if we can cure asthma in the practice, we definitely mm -hmm. gonna cure this gonna coronavirus. Come corona. But don't make- On the line. Yes, <laughs> yes, but don't- Corona, you can get on the line too. <laughs> we, are, we are joking about this, but we do know it's a serious situation. Uh, we do understand that a lot of these coaches uh, tournament directors, parents have invested a lot of money and time into the upcoming uh, season for their child. And we don't want to make light of it because this is someone's livelihood and this is people's health. So by all means, be safe, be vigilant, get some understanding, get some, some know-how as far as what's going on, and just play it as you see Dean safe for everyone around you. All right, moving along from that. So... We want to cover how to market your athlete. Now, when I started doing this thing here, uh, just as a parent, uh, I knew that it was vital that we have film. But I didn't know that film was just gonna be a great thing or a great tool to get it out so everyone else in the world would see it. I would just get a film for my child so that way she would have a reference on what it is that she needed to work on when, when game time happened. And then when I started filming, everybody else on the team that wasn't getting filmed was coming to me trying to get filmed. So I was like, okay, this is very important. How else can we use this? So um, what we're gonna talk about is basically how to film. That's, that's the first step in what you wanna do. So you just need some basic essential tools. A lot of people have cell phone, right? So you got a cell phone, has a camera, it has, a, it has a way for you to sit there and just record as long as you got some battery on there. So stay off the phone while you sitting there. You'll be watching your child anyway. So go ahead and put that camera up. Go, go on Amazon, get you a nice little tripod or a handheld one or one that's going to be straight or got legs. Whatever fancy you want to do, get that so that way you can keep up with the action. And, and we're keeping up with the action. A lot of parents use the excuse, I can't keep up. I can't, I can't watch the game and chill. That's a great excuse. When they little, as they get older, you talk about my child doing this uh, to go to college and play at the next level, and you having trouble getting film either from the school, which shouldn't be a problem nowadays, right. or they just don't have any film, then you're going to be like, I wish I had film. Yes. And it's very easy to edit your film. And on, you can do it right there on your phone. If you have an Apple device, which I, I prefer really like to use, but you probably can find it on Android as well, right in your app store. 
Uh, on, on Apple, you can go right there and download iMovie and you can cut up the film right there, put it all together and package it. And if you need to send someone, you could do it right there from your phone. So it's times have changed where you got the, the video camera and then you got to get the SD card out and you got to go put it in your computer and break it down. You don't even have to do that now. On iPads or, or Android devices, you can actually just connect your uh, your devices right to the other device and upload it and cut the film and do it right there. So there is no excuse now as to why you don't have film. Do not depend on anybody else. Make sure that you get these things done for you and you only. And I'm glad you said times have changed because what used to happen is they depend on the, the coaches to coach the game, record the game, cut the film up, edit the film, and then send it out. Now, parents, you have to do your part because I'm telling you now, nobody's gonna market your kid like you're gonna market your kid. No, uh, take it in, take take pride in it as, as well, and get your child in, uh, involved in doing it. And that way, they can they can see the, the the work that they're putting in, and make it a collaboration to get that out there. Because then they can see how how much better they're getting week in or week out or month in or month out. And it's a it's a growing tool to help them evolve, and then their game will get better as well. Now we're going to move on and explain to you. I know the last topic was a little, a little much, but we're going to slow it down and we're going to kind of show you or tell you what you can use to actually get your video out there. Uh, I said earlier when I started this thing, I would just record and just to record for the purpose of my own use for my own personal use. And then the team came to me and was like, hey, coach, or hey, at the time I wasn't coaching. <laughs> it was like, hey, uh, coach, Mr. Sheldon, can I get some of the film that you had from our tournaments? Uh, because no one else was there filming. I was like, okay, well, I have a purpose now. So let me figure out a way to get it to everyone. So what do we do? We go to the store, we go get some thumb drives and download the film to the thumb drive and then pass it out to everyone that actually needed it and they would just return the thumb drive every week once we needed film and as time went on the technology got greater i came up with another way i was searching 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 and finally i came up with a way to kind of distribute the film a little bit easier and you can take this down this will be in the description down below on how to do this you can go and download google drive so it doesn't matter what platform you're using whether it's uh, Apple device or Android device, you can download Google Drive. You simply will take your videos that you have recorded and you upload it to Google Drive. Uh, you may have to purchase more storage over time, but it's a great tool to have because you can save the, the, the film there in that platform. Then you can create a link and then that link can be emailed or text. text. Yeah, text out. And as long as that video is still stored in that area, anybody can view that content on any platform, whether it needs to be shot to a TV or on a tablet, anywhere in the world, anybody can get it. And let me tell you why it's great for text platform. If you don't know this, college coaches are always on the go. Uh, they're in meetings, they're on recruiting trips, they're in a the hotel. They can click that link and they can view the film right then and there on their phone versus having to wait to get back to the office or open an email or whatever. Trust me, the Google Drive, we sent it out to coaches on Google Drive and they were like, hey, how did, how did you guys uh, do that? Blah, 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 blah. I referred them back to Coach Sheldon. He shared the information just like we're doing now. Right, and another great tool that I started using last year uh, was YouTube, which is what we're using right now to get this great content out to you. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe to our page on the matter of fact that way as well. But you can use that because it can create a link as well and then the college coach can click it out so and and watch it anywhere or anyone else can watch it on that on that platform and everybody probably has youtube or some form in their phone on an app as well so as you can see everything is going digital you don't really have to have hard copies of things even though you want to keep those things but this is a, a easy way an easy way for people to be able to simply go and take control of their own film <laughs> Speaking of family, college coach calling me right now. Okay. Now, coach made a, made a, a great point uh, talking to him when we was in our pre-production meeting. And he was saying that also JUCO coaches. So this does not just apply to just travel ball kids who are, who are coming up and trying to make it on the college level. 
a lot of girls are going the JUCO route, which is junior college. I don't want to use these acronyms and you don't know what I'm talking about, which is junior college. And it, and it could be on the boys' side as well. So we're not just we're not just discriminating against uh, on one this side. This information is for universal. Everybody. Yes. yes. Football, basketball, yes. baseball, yes. soccer, whatever it is, this information applies to all sports. Right. So sometimes these colleges do not have the means to get out there and film, or they may not have the budget or the people, the manpower to do so. So if you can get to those games, see if you're able to film those games for, for your child. And then that way you can use these same platforms to use in their recruiting process as they move on to the next school once they're two years or up at that institution. Absolutely. All right. So. Next topic that we're going to try to cover here, or we will cover, we're not trying, we're doing this thing, is using social media. Now, everyone has social media uh, platforms, whether it's on your phone, your computer, your iPad, your tablet, whatever it is, uh, from Facebook, which we say is for the old people, but you said <laughs> college coaches hey, are College coaches there. are there. <laughs> Uh, Instagram, which y'all y'all clown me, I don't have one, but I will get one. And Maybe. I have an Instagram, okay. so it'll be in the in the description box as well. Yes, uh, I will get a tutorial from some young person to show me how to actually utilize it and and get it get it up and running. But that's that's no here or there. And then lastly, uh, Twitter, which I do use, uh, and there's a lot of college coaches that are are heavily involved on Twitter. They they. Uh, they post a lot of things on there because it's quick and they can get to it, and it's a great platform to use. Uh, so, Coach, going into your social media, uh, you've built up a big following on your on the on the on the Lady Cougars page. Uh, even even your uh, your like page is on there. So, tell us how why is it so important to have uh, that relationship on there, and how does it help out with um, recruiting and marketing uh, the athletes? Well, read social media is important because college coaches move all the time. And sometimes they have a school issued phone with the contacts in it. So when they move schools, they may not necessarily get, get a, uh, they're not necessarily able to take those contacts with them right. from that phone. Uh, now, some of, some of us coaches have been in the game a while. We have the coach's personal cell phone, but that's another, another topic in itself. But like when they move, let's say they move from JUCO to D2 or D1, and they were recruiting a kid from the program. Well, they just stay in contact on Facebook and they inbox you there or they stay in contact on Twitter or Instagram. And for the ones that have Snapchat, they don't too much communicate on Snapchat. That's just something for them to stay entertained with. Right, right, right. So um, when they move in schools, it's easier. And then also when you load up film and highlights on those same platforms, right. they're right there. Right. So, and going in, going into highlights, it's going to kind of run its course along with these social media platforms. When when you're creating your highlight, you you want to make sure that you have good material in there. We just don't want to see you making layups. We just don't want to see shots or or weak crossovers. Uh, we want to six seven and dunking on somebody that's five five right. two. I mean, right, right. It's great entertainment. Your, your highlights should tell the story. So, Coach uh, mentioned this earlier uh, in the week on, on, on social media about what coaches are looking for when they see your highlights. So, kind of run that information by everybody. Okay. On highlights, you never see a drop ball. You never see a missed shot. That's cool. But coaches want to see the defensive hustle, the diving off the loose ball, the 50-50 balls. You creating your own shots right. and no highlights. Um, they don't want to see it against somebody who has weak ankles already. They want to see, are you are you in the passing lanes? Are you rebounding? Are you hustling? What impact you have? That's what they want to see in highlights. It's great you can light it up from three-point range. That's cool. But they want to see what else you bring to the team. Right. Especially if they, if they already have their shooters in place. Because in college, they're recruiting role players. They, they, they're recruiting what they need for the team. Right. So if they got a sophomore, they got a class of sophomore shooters, mm -hmm. they need something else. Right. Or they have a class of juniors that, that's a strong core. They need something else, and they want to be able to see that. What else do you bring uh, to the to the table that's not on the stat sheets? Right. And a lot of people don't know, um, Coach's daughter played on this in this organization that he's ran over the years. 
but I didn't coach. He him. did never directly coach it. He he allowed me to do the coaching from day one when I got there, and so when it was time for her to finally hang up her jersey for for this organization, uh, we wanted to come up with a way to give her her highlights. But we wanted to and, uh, basically highlight how she was as a player. And I always told him that she was the glue player of, of the team and she could do it all. She was smart, she could pass, she could shoot, she could score, she could do whatever she needed to do. So we wanted to highlight that in her highlights. So what do we do? We start with, we start with her defensive presence and her physical toughness. Like you can't, that's not on stat sheet. If there's a, if there's a jump ball, she's not letting go. Um, if there's a rebound, she's she's already boxed out the bigger player. She slid in. Right. That's what coaches want to see. They want to see your basketball IQ in the highlights. And that highlight was a minute thirty seconds long. Right. But just looking at the highlight, coaches want to see more film on. Right. So when you're recording at the games, don't just record your kid in the game. Re- don't just record them scoring. Record what else they can do. Same with football. Right. Uh, if you're wide receiver, tight end, or whatever, they won't know if you can block. If you're running back, they won't know if you can block. Uh, are you going to sell your routes? So this this video isn't just for basketball. Right. It's for all sports across right. across the board. Right. Because it's, it's 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 actually a selling point, and it and it's a way to market yourself without having to really spend a whole bunch of money. And it it is making your your it your own, and you're having fun with it. And it allows your player to see if they're going to grow uh, month in, week in, year over year, they're going to get better. And then you're going to get better with how you're putting this together. Um, it also is going to benefit the other kids in the program as well. Uh, you do not want to be selfish in your film production because your child may be shining, but their shine may also be helping someone else on the team that's needing a push or a market and they may not have the means so share the wealth don't be afraid to help anybody else out because it's going to eventually help everyone and keep everyone going and that's one of the philosophies we have here you open the door or close the door for the next person not just on this team but in the area you lead the area you go somewhere and you act a donkey there are some coaches that have told me that they never want to recruit from Colleen again because of kids prior to our program but now coaches like, hey coach, you got another one of these players, you got another one of those players. Do you know anybody else in another program? And we do help right. other programs. They don't know it. They they wonder like how the coach got their number, but we gave it. Right. And when we're marketing and we're trying to advance one of our players to the next level or get them in that exposure, what we'll do is we will we will cut up some of even more of their highlights, shorten it down a little bit more. And then we'll tag it on those social media areas. So like Twitter, where it the where the video will automatically play once you scroll over it, you in a day you'll get three, four hundred views because people are always scroll like, oh that's cool, that's cool. And then now they understand you got the information of that player, so then now they can they can contact that player directly or hit up the coach or their or their or their parent or guardian. And it just it just starts a wildfire where the only thing you had to do is sit there for five minutes and make a few clicks. And now, now your child is out there with the exposure they need to possibly get them that awarded scholarship or that play on the next level. Now you're now you're listening to us talk about highlights like it's that simple. In all actuality, it is that simple to put highlights together. Go ahead and uh, hit them with a few programs. So what I like to use, and and I've I've, I've gotten better at it. I like to use iMovie. There are a few out there that you can that you can go with, but iMovie for me is the easiest platform to use if you have an iOS device. Uh, Lumia Fusion has a few, which you can if you're a little more advanced. Adobe has a few. Uh, Windows, uh, I think Windows has Movie Maker still. So there's quite a few platforms out there. You just have to find one that's going to be easiest for you. There's a lot of apps on your phone that you can download for free that let you do real quick. Uh, clips for for movies and videos so there is no shortage of ways to get this done for yourself did I would say video editing if once you get into it and you get a little more advanced and you get a little uh, I would say critique yourself about how you want to do it you will take more time on it you will understand how the ins and outs of it make things look better but for a beginner those are the easiest ones to use and I would encourage you to go look them up I will 
list some links in the uh, description below and we will go over those as well. And I'm gonna hit you with this. Uh, I know you guys like the latest music and stuff like that. On your highlights, if you're sitting to college coaches, mute the music. Uh, you can lead a regular sound because they wanna hear what's being said around you. Now, some coaches will mute the whole sound all together, but the music thing is really not selling for it unless you're putting it on YouTube right. or, or Facebook or Instagram. Right. Right. That's that's for the younger people. Right. And lastly, uh, parents, if you are recording, <laughs> if you are recording your child's game, I would highly recommend that you do take the sound out of the video altogether because you are going to have those moments. You are watching your child. So there may be things that are said that shouldn't be said in the heat of, uh, the, in the, moment. Heat of the moment. There may be language that we're using. There may just be too much going on. So just go ahead and take that sound out altogether so there won't be any miscommunication whatsoever. Shout out to Cedric Jackson, our, our great film and parent over the last two years. He is a very, very, very good commentator of, of film. But we have to take his sound Commentary out. out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving right along. Um, this, this process of marketing yourself uh, goes beyond film. So we got that part out of the way. We understand that we need film. Okay. Now, we got to figure out how we're going to get in contact with these coaches. How do we... How does a coach know that you're interested before they're interested in you? How do you get in contact with them? Uh, normally, what we do is we... Uh, look up the school, look up the recruiting coordinator. The recruiting coordinator is going to answer. The head coach will answer sometime, depending on the school and the size of the budget. But nine times out of ten, it's the recruiting coordinator. They're going to have you go on the smaller schools. They're going to have you go look, uh, uh, fill out the questionnaire, yes. do the application to the school, and then they coordinate it that way. Um, they're going to once you do the questionnaire is the fastest way. Right. And most of the smaller schools have them, some of the bigger schools have them, but definitely through the recru uh, recruiting coordinator. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, I was shocked as to how accessible that information was just by going to the website. People have this delusion of grandeur uh, <laughs> that, they're, that they're just going to show up to the tournament, play well, someone sees them, and they're going to call them right away. In, in most cases, it does not it does not work like that. You have to show your interest first, get your information to them, so that way they know that you're interested in them. Let me give you a breakdown as okay. to why that's not going to happen. Let's say we're playing in Atlanta. There are 650 teams playing in that tournament, right? 650 teams, let's say there are 10 kids just for the sake of rounding it up. That's 6,500 kids at that tournament. That's one tournament. Right. There are five live events uh, for the girls. Maybe six. I can't remember right now. Uh, throughout the summer. 6,500 kids times six per grade level. Your kid does not stand out. Right. There are hundreds of live events, certified events throughout the summer. Um, you have to do legwork. Your highlights, your game film, recording, picking up the phone. Google search the school. Yes. <laughs> Google search head coach. Watch some of the game films on the social media flat platform, YouTube. Right. Because your kid may not fit that style of play. Yes. We'll get into that a little bit later. Right. And the next thing that you can possibly do and you should do is see when these coaches are giving their camps and normally camp time is around June so this is the time where you can actually get in there when the staff is actually there not the not the player-led camps where the coaches aren't allowed to be there they can look down on you but they're not really there to evaluate you want to have an opportunity to be in the coach's face get the coach to engage with you and that way you kind of see the, if you're a good fit for them. So talk about June camps, talk about that way of getting exposure. Okay, June camps. Um, look up some of the D3 schools, the D2 schools. The only time you want to go to the D1 camps 
is when they have the elite position camps. Everybody gets excited about going to these team camps um, and you don't have that caliber player. Be realistic about when picking these camps because I promise you, everybody doesn't have a Baylor guard or UT guard or a TCU, SMU, and you're like, oh, these schools uh, are this, that, and the other. Look at their roster. Look at what the coach is looking for. There's a certain mental toughness, and you know if your kid has that mental toughness or not. So when you're picking camp and your high school coach comes in, like, hey, such and such is having a camp. Oh, that would be great. Come on now. Let's keep it real. Right. Um, some of the best camps have been the JUCO camps in the – and I'm talking about when they're 8th, 9th, 10th grade. Mm-hmm. Um, the D3 camps, the D2 camps. Because it gives your kid a real perspective. When the head coach is there, those head coaches aren't like, oh, come on, good job. Right. They're telling you. They're there to work, see what you what you bring to the table. And then that's how you get on that recruiting board. Right. Also, these uh, exposure camps. If you go to an exposure camp and they're not recording the camp and the person that's hosting the camp is on the court too, your child is really not getting evaluated. I'm telling you the truth because I hate seeing people waste their money to go to the money grab camps. Um, somebody telling you we help X number of kids get into college, but you walk in, you don't see anybody recording, you don't know how they're going to get you the evaluation sheet. They don't have numbers on their jerseys. Right. Every legitimate evaluation camp has people recording and they have numbers on their jerseys. The reason they have numbers on their jerseys is because they have assigned numbers when you signed up for the camp. When you signed up for the camp, there's a media flyer there for the coaches that they're going to send the information out to and the coaches that are in attendance. Uh, June is perfect for the D2, well, really D3, NAIA, and JUCOs because they have a limited budget. So if those coaches aren't showing up at those camps, you're wasting your money. Right. And another another way to get your... Inbox me. Yes. I got you. He got you. Another way to market yourself by putting all these things together well it's your film your highlights and your social media on social media if you follow these college coaches a lot of times they will they will ask where certain class or or positions what tournaments that you're going to be attending so that way they know to look for you and you may be on their checklist on their on their sheet their check sheet so just do your homework follow these these coaches because they got so much to do to prepare to get to these tournaments and and for the live period that they may miss things. So do yourself a favor, go ahead and get ahead of it so that way you're more prepared to be seen, heard, recruited, scholarship, signed, letter, attend, picture with everybody. Uh, Also, when you contact me coaches, send a GPA. Again, there are millions of kids playing basketball. Send a GPA. That's what's going to separate your kid from everybody else. Uh, Believe it or not, college coaches do care about the GPA of their teams. Right. That's another. We talk about highlights and film and all that. But when you do your little bio and your highlights, such and such, 3.5 GPA. Right. SAT scores. If they've, taken, ACT, yes. if they've taken the standardized test, put it on them. Yes. All these things help grab their attention. You only yes. got 30 seconds to grab their attention. Right. Opening credit, blah, 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 GPA, SAT. We Notice we didn't say what major they declared, right? Because they're still 8th, 9th, 10th grade. They don't know what they want to be. Right. Yeah, you think they do, but they don't. And lastly, rounding out the topics here. Now we, we covered we covered a lot of stuff, but this is for the parent that has possibly that elite athlete that you that everyone knows that's the elite athlete. They're very good in the situation that they're in. They may start to outgrow whether it may be the the IQ, the level of play, the players around, the coaching, and they need to move on to the next thing. And that's not a bad thing because everyone should mutually agree that if you do outgrow a situation that you should mutually part, you shouldn't try to hold someone back if they're going to advance and be better. At the same time, if you are going to move to these situations, 
you got to be diligent in doing your research with the organization you're going to move to. Are they going to be able to uh, keep up the help of the recruitment of the child? Are they going to put them in the, the right places to be seen when it's time for, for open periods, a live period, whatever sport that you're doing? So coach, kind of touch on that and about sometimes the, the, the false promises or the good promises that actually work and some that don't. Okay. What coach is talking about when he says, your kid outgrows the program. I've had a couple of kids that, that have just outgrown the area and they moved on to other programs. The mistake that other parents made, um, that kid wasn't on the level that the kid that moved with them. So they went to that other team the kid that moved is on the top team. Right. The kid that moved with them, the followers that moved with them, is on the second tier, third tier team of that organization. So what ends up happening is the top tier kid is where they need to be. Right. Um, they're there mentally. They're there athletically. Right. Um, they fit that team. So when we're talking about making sure We've had players move from our team that were getting looks and getting offers that have actually lost schools and offers because they moved. Right. Uh, and they moved into a situation where they wasn't getting exposed. The, the head coach or the head of the organization was only worried about the top team. Right. So when you're making, when you're making those choices to move, make sure it's the right fit for you. Right. Um, not every kid, the move is going to work just because of the social factors. Yes. Um, I can tell you in the last four years, we've had kids to move and it hurt. Yeah. Parent came to me and was like, well, we're gonna move this, that, and the other. Listen, it's a, it's a business decision for you and your family. It doesn't hurt my feelings. It doesn't hurt the coaching staff feelings, but you may end up hurting your kid. Right. My whole saying is here in the Colleen area, and we do have kids that come from outside this area. Can you go to Dallas? and play on the team? Can you go to San Antonio and play on the team and make the team and contribute? I'm not talking about stars. I'm talking about like you go there and you give them a run and coach like, okay, I'm going to put you in in these situations. Right. Parents, a lot of times you're chasing the shiny thing. The shiny thing can be gold or it can be fool's gold. They both shine. Right. And what you're talking about with the promises, um, the snake oil can come in and say, I can we playing in California, we playing in New York, and that's great. The organization, they're going that place. But where does your kid fit in there? And that's the navigation part, and that's a whole nother show in itself. Right. Um, I promise you, you just have to be honest about the thing, and you have to do a lot of research. The exposure part, the coaches do their part, the parents do their part, the players do their part. It ain't just show up. If you're not happy with the organization, you move, but understand you have to do twice the legwork because you're going into a new environment. You have to update the coaches, especially if they've been following the kids since they seventh grade yeah. with one organization. Mm -hmm. And then you wait till they 10th, 11th grade year to move them. If you know you're gonna move them in the fall, start reaching out to the coaches. Yes. So in, in closing here, we've given out a lot of information, and it's not really all of it. I mean, there's tons and tons of, of information. We can sit here for hours, but, I mean, we don't have enough battery life for that. But. And, we're, and we're struggling <laughs> to get through this topic because our minds are like, it's so much over the years that we've been doing this, and we've seen people get hurt by, like, parents, I see parents at the games all the time filming, but you never see anything after that. Right. It's just sitting on their device. Right. I mean, and then they go pay for an expensive recruiting service where they're gonna charge you, and we're not gonna call names because we don't want to get sued. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> they charge you fourteen hundred dollars for a basic package, and they do two highlights for you, um, provided you already have hub. Right. And then they shotgun blast your stuff out there. And then there are other recruiting services they're gonna charge you five or six hundred dollars, but they up to date on everything that they're doing. Right. So now I'll give a shout out to Anthony Washington. Uh, you can look Washington. him up. You can, you can look him up on Facebook, Twitter, and all those other places. Good guy will not steal you wrong. I just thought I'd give you a free shout out. Yes, sir. So, once again, film, social media, highlights, market yourself. No one's gonna do for you like you're gonna do for yourself.
you can you can put your trust in people so far, but you're only going to go as far as you want to take yourself. So just remember that, and everything will 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 start to sort itself out because you'll start to build that path for yourself. And I want to throw this in there, and I'm telling you now. I will help any parent that's willing to help themselves. Just got to DM me, but I listen. I'm not the know-all, be all, do all. So sometimes I will refer you to somebody else that can help you. But I will help as many of you as I can. Why? Because I'm retired and I have time. Okay? All right. And if you have any questions about how to break down the film, highlight film, uh, my information will be in the box. I try to help you out as much as possible and get you set. But... That's all the time we got for today. I want to thank y'all once again for tuning in to another episode of Two Coaches, One Conversation. Once again, I am Coach Sheldon. And I'm Coach Will. Y'all have a blessed day.